just get that going. And we're all set. So again, thank you guys so much for, um, for joining in today and, and being here. It means a lot to me that people care enough to step through things. Um, so let's see what we can get done here today. So uh, just to give you guys a sense of uh, some of the background that went into this, because I know it's really tough to communicate. I felt, I felt a little bit like I wrote a very long blog post, but at the end of the day, we were just sort of dropping a lot of stuff in people's laps. So uh, let's see if we can get some more context out there. So, so where where we've been is a big part of where we're coming out with this plan for the year. So, you know, I think there's a few things that we keep in mind when we were putting the plan together. Um, first is that the association itself is still a pretty new organization, you know, uh, just, just a few years old. And we're really, I think, formed around, and again, this is my understanding, because obviously I wasn't there. <laughs> so I'm inheriting a lot of this knowledge. And it's good to have a conversation about it. But, you know, I think we we're really formed to address two really particularly sort of dire, what felt like dire needs in the, in the community. And, and one was to just sort of address con management and take the, in particular, take the fiscal responsibility for those cons out of the, uh, off of the plates of the community, because that is a ton of responsibility, um, you know, to make sure that, that cons could keep going in that way. Um, and really the, helping to support the Drupal.org infrastructure in particular and making sure that there was a steady home there um, for, for Drupal.org. So it was really like formed around these narrow needs, but the mission is obviously a lot broader than that. Um, and so I think we're in this, um, you know, particular phase where it's a really interesting time in that um, the community and the association are trying to come to terms with what is the role of the association in the community um, in this context where we are right now. Um, and the association itself is really trying to also, um, you know, grow up as an organization um, and put more, put more management pieces in place internally, define things more clearly, you know, so I think everyone's looking for definitions right now um, in a space that's a little bit ill-defined. Um, so, you know, that's really sort of where we're at. We feel like we're at right now. So internally really trying to understand and manage our work better, um, but really listen to the community and figure out what is it that we need to do next as we sort of grow into the full realization of the mission um, and have that be as much as possible, you know, a community conversation. Um, I think the caveat there for me is that, that the community is, you know, the words, the community, those are tough words because there isn't a community the, the you know, definitely feels like the reality is that we have um, a lot of different um, pieces of the puzzle uh, in our community. You guys are from all over the world um, with all sorts of connections to the Drupal project itself. Um, and so we have all these different perspectives uh, on what the association should be and what it should be doing. And it is a real challenge to try to manage um, the differing opinions there. Um, we have people that just, I mean, just to give you, you know, an example, a really tactical example, you know, on any given con survey, you know, we can find out that 50% of the people um, loved the food and 50% of the people hated the food, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's just a small example, but these are the kinds of things that we bump into uh, every day, every time we do anything over here at the association. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a challenge to manage what the community means. Um, and we're really trying to figure out how to navigate that challenge and ask questions in a way that helps us come up with um, a direction that we know not everyone's going to agree with, but that everyone can understand why we made the choice we made and they can all agree to live with it, if that makes sense. So that's, you know, sort of feel like the context that we're operating in right now. Um, and what are we hearing from the community? A few things that I think are some common themes. The, the first is that we have to fix the transparency and accountability of the association and, and do more of those things. So, you know, I've been working really hard to make sure that when choices are made, we have a process um, 
uh, a process of getting community input and then sharing what we heard and then making a choice and talking about what the choice is and then you know being really open to hearing criticism or questions about those choices and try to answer things and and just be out there in the community more talking about what we're doing uh, and for us you know that's that's what transparency is 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 you know about putting the conversation out there um, not just putting board meeting notes up, but really making everything as uh, much of a conversation as we possibly can. Um, that's really been our goal. Um, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the feedback I get about that contains the word transparency can sometimes sound more like, um, you know, people are, are, are looking for, um, they're not necessarily upset that it's not transparent enough, but they're upset with the decision that was made. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really help us um, set an expectation of what transparency will be from the DA. Um, and the other bit is accountability. So, you know, telling you what we're gonna do and then showing you how well we performed on that is is another piece that we're, we're really trying to get into, um, uh, we're really trying to, to, to make happen here. So transparency and accountability, we heard a ton from the community about that. Fixing Drupal.org, um, and I think that <laughs> the answer to fixing Drupal.org is as diverse as you know the community itself. We hear all kinds of things that are broken with Drupal.org all over the place. Um, and then uh, you know this message, particularly from the board, uh, our board, you know, doing more and and really living out the rest of our mission. And I think you know, um, Yos, I've heard you talk about this too, right? Like not just making Drupal.org out there, but uh, I think. Oh, sorry, I think I heard this more from Bert. I think, but you know, making sure that we're out there um, getting Drupal out in front of uh, different audiences and making sure that people know about the project and are, are and are you know using Drupal. So. Those are the that, that was that was Bert, by the way. Yeah. That was Bert. Yep. <laughs> and I really liked I really liked your reply to most, if not all, but most of the uh, of the questions. So I mean, um, kudos for that one, Holly. Oh, thanks, Jos. Appreciate that. So yeah, so I mean, this is what we've heard in the community, what people want to see more of from the DA. And I mean, there's a longer list than this, but this is the stuff that came up, you know, almost universally from folks. Um, so these are things that we thought about um, when putting the plan together too. So, so what's in the plan? Um, I just want to be clear that there's sort of there's three things to look at. Um, there's the leadership plan itself, um, which is a narrative about what we're going to do in the year. Um, there's the budget, which is the numerical representation of that narrative, um, and then there's a budget narrative um, that just sort of explains things in the budget, because the budget's full of acronyms and how does it work and why does it do that? Um, so the, the budget narrative just helps us understand what uh, what's happening in that budget a little bit more. So there are three things to look at. Um, and all together, they sort of put together a picture for the year and sort of set the tone for what we're doing and um, the context for, for the work. So what are we trying to say in, in that plan this year? I think there's three key points. There's probably like eight, but I'm gonna focus on three and then we can get into the specifics. Um, you know, first that we are really trying to answer that question about transparency and accountability um, in a new way. So the leadership plan itself is a document that is supposed to put um, accountability, accountability out into the community. So for the first time, we're trying to say, these are things that we're trying to do and here are some metrics that will at least give us an indication of whether or not we are um, meeting that goal. Um, and we're gonna put those out there, we're gonna build a dashboard around it, those dashboards will be available publicly, right? So it's both transparent and you know, provides accountability as well. Um, we're trying to address key community concerns with this plan, particularly around uh, drupal.org, um, and so you'll see you know, that's really the emphasis in 2014 is um, helping to make Drupal.org Drupal a better tool for the community. Um, and then the other thing that I think is a, um, a theme of these documents is, you know, maturing the organization um, and getting more, um, more management practice into the organization for ourselves um, and stuff then that, you know, um, translates out into the community. So um, I think we see that you know, developing metrics isn't only uh, a way, uh, uh, developing goals and the metrics that, su that support them isn't just about transparency and accountability, but it's about 
um, creating internal systems that manage our work and make us a stronger organization um, as well. Um, and just the way we present financials, all of that is, is part of maturing the association and, and taking us to that next sort of organizational development phase. So those are some, some key points from my, my perspective for the plans. So we should go look at some specifics if that sounds good to everyone. But any, any questions about that before we go take a look at the plan itself? Nope, not for me. Mm -hmm. okay. So far it sounds good. All right, thanks. And hey, Ruby, I see you joined. Um, I will go ahead and um, I'm gonna unmute you as well so you can just pop, pop a question in whenever you have one. Hey, thanks. Good, all right. So let's take a look at specifics. All right, so the leadership plan itself, um, uh, some background from where, so let's start at the top uh, with a summary. Um, in the summary, there's a section, grow Drupal from three to 10%, Drupal Association of the Heart of Strong Drupal Community. We exemplify a well-run organization and under there, there's five bullet points. So um, where the context for where these things came from as objectives, because um, I realized it sounds like it's somewhat new to see some of these things. So the, the board met together in November of 2012. Um, you can note those five elements um, all come from um, board objectives that were set in that November meeting. That was um, right before I was um, hired. And um, uh, they met and talked about what does the DA need to focus on to be a successful organization. Um, and these were five sort of shorter term, like year to two year objectives um, that the board set. Um, the association overall does not have a strategic plan or a vision. We have a mission, right? Support the Drupal project. Um, and we articulate a little bit about how we achieve that mission through the cons and other global events, through um, you know, uh, supporting the infrastructure uh, for Drupal.org and uh, representing the project legally, those sorts of things. But we don't have any sort of strategic plan, some stuff that looks multiple years out and talks about where we need to get um, get to to support that mission very well. So the board objectives were sort of the first sort of tactical stab in the ground at that or stake in the ground, right? Like in a couple of years, you guys need to do these things um, if you're going to continue to exist as an organization. Um, and so the three bullet points above those uh, were our first stab internally at trying to put some longer term vision on the table, growing Drupal to 10% of the web. By when? I don't know yet. <laughs> but we want to start to figure out how to put some bigger picture objectives um, on the table um, to provide some more context for the work that we do. Um, Ultimately, what needs to happen is that we need to do some strategic planning here at the organization, but we don't have that yet, um, but we're really trying to work towards that thinking, and, and that's where these bullet points come from. So they're open-ended, but, but yeah, I mean, we, basically what we want to do is make sure that Drupal is adopted very broadly. Uh, we want to make sure that the association is, you know, operating as part of the community and not outside of the community or as an adjunct to the community, but, you know, as part of the community uh, and that we are, you know, running ourselves well um, and we've got, you know, good financials to support the project and a staff that's really happy to be here and do the work they're doing. So a little background on those things. Um, so we are then moving on into the imperative. So very short term, what do we need to do in the next year to try to move the needle on those longer term bullet points? We want to look at um, two particular things that we think are really key. So if we're going to grow Drupal adoption and um, we are going to make the DA part, you know, a, a more integral part of the community and be a well-run organization, there's two things we have to focus on. The first um, in 2014 is Drupal.org uh, and really making that tool shine. Um, and then the second is creating a successful Drupal 8 launch. Um, and the reason we think those are so important Drupal.org obviously is the sort of centerpiece of the, the community. It is where everyone meets from all around the world all the time and hashes out all the solutions to all the problems, right? 
Um, and, uh, and so we want to make sure that that tool really works for people, that you're able to do the work you need to do on Drupal.org. Uh, we also want to make sure that Drupal.org is representative of um, the other audiences that are coming in. So the folks who are trying to look at Drupal and say, is this the right tool for me, for example. Um, for folks who are maybe already using Drupal, um, they're, they're site builders or, or um, content, even content editors kind of folks uh, using Drupal, but need some extra resources to take, take Drupal to the, uh, their, their use of Drupal to the next stage. That's, um, you know, we want to make sure that those folks can all find what they need on Drupal.org as well. Um, but in 2014, you know, we really want to focus on um, making Drupal a better tool for folks. Um, we also feel like if we can do this well and we do it in a way where we're not just making changes, but we're making changes with the community, uh, you know, with your feedback and with your input, then that also helps us towards that goal of, of being a, an integral part of the community, right? So if we're all in it together, and that's the way we run the changes that happen on Drupal.org, then we advance that goal um, as well. Um, and then to do this work, we are going to have to increase, uh, we feel like the approach is that we're going to have to increase our staff um, and uh, we're going to have to build some better internal systems to support that growth as well. So we feel like it really helps us um, get at those three uh, main um, longer term areas uh, outlined above. Uh, and then the Drupal 8 launch, you know, it's a big release and we really want to make sure it succeeds um, and, uh, you know, as well as Drupal 7 did or better. Uh, and so, again, we really feel like focusing here helps us get at, at really all, all three goals. It obviously helps us grow Drupal um, if, if the launch is really good. Um, this is something we have to do within the community, uh, and so it helps us there. Um, and again, um, it's helping us build internal systems that we're going to be able to use um, in, other, in other ways as well. So it strengthens the, the organization, too. So those are imperatives. So, so big picture, which I know is a little bit ill-defined, but we're aware of that. Um, and then what we feel like we need to focus on in 2014. Any, any questions about that? Nope. All right. Although I have some very interesting points regarding the Drupal 8 launch, but you, you already know that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, Good. So how are we going to do that work? Um, what are we going to, you know, how, how's the DA going to be able to tackle this work uh, this year? Not tactically, but strategically, what are sort of, what's the frame we're going to use to try to tackle these imperatives? Um, you know, a couple of things. One, um, the, 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 the association itself, um, you know, we need to do some, obviously need to do good work, but we also um, are looking for a little, uh, a little polish around here. So, you know, um, we, we have uh, just, you know, for example, the, you know, the association website, I don't know if you tried to find any 990s from past years, but good luck with that. You know, we, we have some polishing that we need to do on our own stuff to make sure that people can, um, you know, recognize the work that, find the work that we're doing um, so that it feels like you're dealing with professionals um, <laughs> who know what they're doing. Um, so, We've got that kind of work that we need to do so that we can all operate with some confidence about what we're doing. Um, and more community, um, that's just going to be really huge, figuring out how to how to integrate the community into everything we're doing and to show the community that we are that we are doing this stuff together. Um, is going to be really huge. And so the short my shorthand for this is is more names on our our site, um, which actually, uh, if anyone's ever read the book Made to Stick, um, sort of a concept I stole from there, which is really about, uh, you know, there's a guy who owned a small town newspaper. Newspapers are folding all over the country. Why is his newspaper still successful? His newspaper is successful because the community can find themselves in the paper every day. And, and that's how I want things to be here at the DA. I want, we do a ton of work with the community every day, but we're not really always exposing those stories um, and, and exposing that work um, in the right way. So I, I want to get really a lot better at, at communicating that um, so that people can see that and that people also then will find, um, see that work and then recognize also ways that they can get engaged. And so I think it'll be a, a multiplier effect for us. So 
work, you know, really taking a community based approach to all the work that we do um, and operating very professionally and all that work as well. Which, you know, is, is, a, is a tall order, but that's that's our that's our strategy. Um, and then normally in any plan, we would also sort of uh, one piece of context we would have is what are the values that we're operating from? So that when we're making decisions, we are making those decisions with the, you know, with the right, um, when you're making a tough decision, coming back to your values is often a very good uh, way to help sort of tilt the scale in one favor or the other. Um, and I, I normally, I find them a very important part, of, well, I always find them a very important part of decision making. Um, the association does not have any defined set of values at this moment in time, although we've just begun um, work on that. So hopefully we'll solve that problem shortly. Um, I think we have a bunch of assumed values, but it'll be very good to get those articulated um, and, and make sure that they um, you know, obviously align with community values um, so that we can use those as a, a way to help make decisions in the future as well. So normally we would outline those here um, as part of the context as well. Then we outline our mission. Um, so now we know sort of what the bigger picture looks like or is starting to look like for us. We're still defining it. Um, what our imperatives are for the next year, what we need to focus on, how we want to do that work. Um, and then we get into, all right, well, how will we know we're succeeding, right? So we've got three things we're really focused on doing. What are the um, objectives that are going to tell us we're succeeding? So then we get into the part of the plan um, that focuses on the metrics. Um, and normally what I would present to you folks every year, um, it would be um, a, uh, you'd always see things in sort of a, a scale. So we'd have the year coming up and what we're proposing along with a couple years prior and a couple years uh, in the future. So you get a sense of what the uh, direction of those metrics have been and will be. Um, and we are uh, one thing I want to emphasize here is this is our first time really trying to put goals like this out here in the community. And so we um, we had a tough time even finding a lot of numbers, <laughs> let alone predicting what they should look like or for you know the next three years. Uh, so we did not put anything down for 15 or 16 um, while we take this year to really understand what the numbers are and what they mean. Um, and I suspect that you know when we put out the next annual plan, um, we'll see we'll be able to see a couple years in the future, um, as well as we, we probably will change some of these metrics over time. But right now, these are the ones that, you know, the, the board and staff felt like are going to give us our best insight into some of these objectives. So before I dive into those, I just want to stop one more time. Any questions from the community? Not so much questions, but I, I, I did make some notes maybe for in the, in the end or so to I have a few yeah. statements of excitement as well. Um, there's certain <laughs> questions. There you go. I will take statements of excitement. That works. <laughs> I, I, I can throw that out there now. I was going to wait until the end. But basically, um, from my perspective, it, everything that I've read about you know, what's being proposed, the, the, the new staff that's being brought on, the, the refocusing on the Drupal.org infrastructure, those are all timely issues. Um, that have needed to be addressed. And I, I think that what the DA is seeing is that they're in the same position as a lot of other small enterprises and shop, you know, Drupal shops out there. They, they're, they're all facing the same types of challenges. So I think that um, as the DA solves these issues, it puts the DA in a unique position to be a role model, particularly in the DevOps space. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, I, it excites me to know in that the DA has this opportunity in front of it, and I, I, I just want to impart that I really hope that that opportunity is realized and communicated to the community properly so that people can learn from it. That's a, that's a really great point. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, our intention is to document and share as much as possible. Um, uh, and I know that we are not... I hope that everyone on the call has seen that that has that has been our that is the velocity right that we're trying to bring to this. Um, it's to move into that direction of of sharing as much as possible. And I know we're not always 100% successful, but that's definitely the intent. Yost, did you have anything you wanted to add? Well, um, 
Yeah, one thing I can I can bring now is a little bit of um, thing. You mentioned earlier that you are looking at one of the things that you're looking at is how to integrate community into the work that we do. As you mentioned it, w what if you turn that around? Um, because yeah. here in Europe, some folks, well, not everybody, but some folks in Europe, when when they read something like that, they're going to frown and say, "What the heck?" Um, but if you turn around to saying, you know, Drupal Association, we'd like to see where we can help the community. And, and and see how we how you know we can show the community what kind of work we how we approach things and how we can do it how, what we can do with for you and with you etc. And um, it, it just it you end up of course with the same thing but it sounds a heck of a lot better. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's a fair. minds here in Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's a fair point, Yos. And I feel like um, you know, I think that's a fair point. I feel like we have um, there's you know there's a there's a I think that that is the staff's intent, right? Like, I think that that's what I we are, are, are attempting to do. And I think um, I think there are probably some places where we have to draw some lines in the sand around some of the work mm -hmm. that's already undertaken. Um, like, it's easy to say, oh, hey, community, you're doing this work and you need some help with that. And how can we be helpful to you? And and there's something new and we create it together. Um, I think, I think um, I'm going to read between the lines here and... and <laughs> I'm going to read between the lines here and say that we're talking about European cons to some context, to some degree in this conversation here, and, mm -hmm. and say that, you know, I think we probably have to go back to the drawing board together because um, there is a certain amount of, we have some history and we have to probably undo a little history, but also at the end of the day, you know, if there is a $1.4 million financial liability, someone's got to take some ownership right mm -hmm. and and it's a lot harder for 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 us as an organization just to say like to i mean i think we want to have the attitude that we're there for the community but at the end of the day when you're taking the financial responsibility you also have to figure out how to take uh ownership in ways that probably rub up against the the true meaning of that statement even if we all try mm -hmm. to feel it in spirit I agree, and that's the that's that's the challenge, of course, right, for you guys. Yeah. Um, but just that you know, it, the 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 marketing message, the the way you say it, sometimes um, you know can can already can, can already make a difference. Uh, yeah. And, and so, when you say um, you know take fiscal control uh, of the cons, that's fine, but some people, I mean, most people are not even worried about the numbers of the DA, and, and um, some folks are totally worried really like it, it shows in everything they do mm -hmm. um, they're very worried about the content because they don't really you know worry and, and, and think about that stuff but the content and what, what the con is all about mm -hmm. appears to be um, a, hot, a very hot potato for, for most and so what they say is what, what does the DA have to do with the content of the of the con you know, doing the financials and stuff like that. And of course, there's. I know that these two things are very much connected. Okay, good. Um, right, <laughs> I was about to say to that. Right. Of course. Yeah. But the point is that a, um, the hardcore techies, they don't look at the con as an organization or an, an event that costs one and a half million and, and stuff like that. They see it as, you know, it's where we talk about the code that we did there and about the feature that we're developing there. They have a totally different viewpoint and and if you can try and keep that viewpoint for the tech community while building an, the other viewpoint around it of the, let's say, non-tech, the marketing, that you can see more and more marketing people going to cons, so more in America, but also here in Europe. Yeah. So th that's something you can, it's, 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 it's the, it's the um, how do you call that? It's plagat, they, they call it the, um, you know, it's, it's doing one thing and, and it's, it, but not, Okay. Saying one thing, thing but doing another, sure. No you, no, you say the one thing, but you also still are doing the other thing. So mm -hmm. you're trying to walk, do, do things both ways. Gotcha. All right. um, so if, if you make sure that the, the technical people remain in the control of the technical things of the technical product Tupo, then you've made, then you've scored major points. Yeah, well, I definitely feel like it's a... Um... You know, we're, we have to have a conversation and figure out, like I said, how to define yeah. some of mm -hmm. these things better to make sure that um, everyone feels like um, mm -hmm. everyone feels like they know what to expect. I feel like a lot of a lot of what we're up against right now is that there's a lot of uh, 
a lack of clarity, you mm -hmm, know, yep. uh, um, and, and just having the conversation will be, mm -hmm. will go a long way. Um, but I, I, I appreciate that you recognize our intentions here and are willing to have the conversation, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yep. All right. And, and, and I hear, and I hear your point about the language and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely working on that. It probably comes from me just personally. I feel like, um, you know, it's been a really challenging eight months for me as a human being <laughs> here. Um, because I, I feel like there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, there is a lot of us versus them mentality, us being the community, them being the DA and why are we always out to get everyone, <laughs> you know? And so, I feel a little bit like it's been set up that way and it's been tough for me to work through that and talk about it. I, that's probably where my language comes from is that, it, you know, it's sort of always been presented that way to me, but um, I thank you for understanding. That's not what I mean. And we'll continue to work on that language. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so let me, let me get back to some, some of these objectives just to run through them. I don't, I don't want to stop and talk through each line item because there's a ton of stuff there. Um, but I, I think um, what I want to point out is that, um, again, we can't measure everything. Um, and we're not always certain what the right indicators are for some of these goals. When we say we want to have a well-run organization, um, you know, we've got some income-related stuff. We did manage to get one employee satisfaction metric in there. Um, but... Um, you know, we're not sure that these are the exact right things to measure yet, um, but we're going to be watching these numbers over this year, and we hope that, you know, that will inform what we measure next year and what we are able to, um, you know, what we're able to address um, after that. So, um, you know, I think, um, you know, just think of all of these things as our first take um, in a very iterative process. Um, and what we're planning to do with these numbers in, in, the, in the coming months is put together a community dashboard. So you'll be able to see all of these numbers um, as we track them and watch our progress throughout the year. Uh, a lot of these numbers will be tracked uh, monthly. Some of these numbers will only be tracked annually, but we'll let you know what those are. Um, and I think that it is, um, you know, we'll put that out there in a way where you can just sort of always drop in and check out that document. Um, and I think these are not also all the metrics that will get tracked, you know, some total across the organization. Um, each department here will also be tracking tracking additional metrics that relate to, you know, sort of their tactical daily work. But we'll put uh, um, th those will probably be more internal um, as we go along. So we'll, we'll track some more things too, like I said, to see if we can find out if these are better, if we can find better indicators towards some of these things. Um, but I did want to stop and see if anyone had looked at these metrics in depth and had any questions about any of the individual metrics. Okay. So fun times with tracking numbers. I actually love it. I'm very excited. Um, so, and then here are some of the program related goals. Um, we, we are also in the plan. So what is each team going to be doing? Um, so on the, Drupal.org side, um, this work is really driven by the working groups, the software working group, the content working group, um, and those other guys, oh, the infrastructure working group, um, who are, uh, you know, uh, really working right now to put together, well, they, are, they already did put together plans for 2014, and now they're working on figuring out how to implement those plans. Um, so you can see some of the work we're, we're planning to do to bolster Drupal.org. Um, it's actually not a new Gennady cluster anymore. It's a new something else cluster, um, which I'll remember in a minute. But at the time when we wrote the plan, it was Gennady cluster. That's what we're going to go with. Uh, but basically more infrastructure that will allow us to provide better test bots, more uh, responsiveness, uh, more servers to increase the site speed. Uh, we have lots of staffing changes, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, internal security testing and maintenance. Uh, we have a lot of software development projects that the software working group are working to define right now. A lot of those will happen around the issue queue, uh, UX issues. Um, we wa also want to take uh, some time to focus through the content working group on persona development. Um, and Ruby, this just goes to your point that you made in the, in the chat a little while ago. It isn't just Drupal developer geeks and marketing folks who are part of our community. And we really want to understand who's coming to Drupal and what Drupal.org and what is it that they're looking for so that we can 
build a site that really does represent them. Um, and of course, that research is also really helpful in program development for the cons, et cetera. So we think that's a really good investment to make. Um, and then we still have some cleanup to do from our security audit uh, in the uh, summertime. Um, events, uh, on the event side, we're gonna make some investments in our version of COD slash continue to try to align that with the actual versions of COD that are out there, if that's the right thing to do, but that's a long conversation that we keep having. Um, we're gonna be adding some new programs to the cons themselves. Um, in particular, um, we're gonna continue to run the community day, or the community is gonna continue to run that, but we're gonna continue to provide the space for it, um, as well as the, um, uh, we're gonna start a CMS evaluator event. Uh, so that event, we're gonna run alongside the con in Austin. Um, the intent is to bring folks in who are looking at Drupal as a product uh, for, their, uh, for, their, for their company, um, help them understand what Drupal's all about and what the benefits are. Um, it'll run alongside the con at first, just because we have lots of infrastructure there, but we feel like long-term, this is something that we can spin out um, and run separately. Uh, we want to sort of provide a little more structured support to camps. We've been talking to a lot of camps about what they need, and we're um, putting a plan together for how we provide more resources to camps. Um, in particular, um, the, 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 the fact that we're opening a, a, a branch in London will allow us to provide fiscal sponsorship to camps in the, in the, in the UK and Europe for the first time, uh, the way that we were able to do here in the States. Um, and we really want to formalize Global Training Days and, and make that a bigger program as well on the event side. And then uh, marketing communications, um, uh, ADO redesign, not a huge redesign, but a, um, a uh, you know, not an overall top to bottom redesign, but really the IA um, and, and sort of layout uh, of the site so that folks can find stuff. So information architecture, sorry, and layout. Um, Drupal 8 launch marketing, um, and then we're going to work on some Drupal association branding. Um, that's just important. One of the things we keep bumping into is um, how the cons relate to the DA and how the DA relates to Drupal, and we, we're hoping that we can answer some of those questions um, you know, visually through some branding as well. Um, and then HR and finances, lots of processes that we have to document. We've been really focused this year on what is the work that we do and what does it take to get that work done? <laughs> um, and so now, um, now that I feel like staff really have a sense of what it is that they do, um, we need to sort of document some of those things so that um, other people can have clarity into how, how work happens. Um, we're definitely gonna have to create a good onboarding program because we're planning to hire quite a bit. Um, and we've been you know, working on benefits and work-life balance. And um, I think one big thing for the community is um, creating a new set of financial reports. Uh, so you may have noticed I've been putting out some of the sort of standard monthly financials for folks to be able to look at. Um, we wanna create a new set of quarterly financial reports that really show uh, what the work is that we're doing um, from a financial perspective. Sales and support. I'm gonna bolster up uh, sponsorship fulfillment in particular uh, and customer service for sponsors. Um, and then we get to the fun staffing side. And so, when you're looking through the staffing se section, um, one thing I want to point out to you is that um, we, a, a couple of things. Um, one is, um, I think everyone on the call is aware that we're looking at a, a large deficit spend for 2014. Um, so one thing in particular that we want to keep in mind is that the driver of that deficit spend is staffing. And so if we, we, we've tiered the starts for all of these roles, both because A, we, we just can't take on you know, 12 hires in January, we couldn't even make 12 hires by January, um, but B, uh, and primarily because uh, what we wanted to do was get sort of some of the most important folks on board first. Uh, um, and then as we go through the year, we can check in on our financial performance and basically, you know, play a go, no go game um, at that point. Um, so if we're not meeting revenue, we can look at, um, you know, we can look at what hires we have coming up and say, OK, maybe we can't take that hire on. But what we're not going to do is put the association or the project at, you know, more risk by taking on a burden, taking on more staffing burden uh, if the revenue isn't going as we had anticipated for the year. So 
just want to point that out that we've staggered things that way. Um, and the other thing that I think is not necessarily explicit in here, but you know, this is what we think that that hiring needs to look like. Um, and of course, the bulk of the hires are happening on the Drupal.org side, a junior developer, DevOps. Uh, oops, it's time for something. Junior developer, DevOps, um, uh, QA engineer, web infrastructure manager, all these things. This, particularly around the tech hires, you know, we're looking for a CTO at the moment. Um, and depending on that person's strengths um, and how they, uh, you know, their experience building these teams, they may see something different. So we might not hire these exact titles. Uh, you know, at, at this exact time frame. So in terms of accountability, I, I don't want you guys to look at this part of the plan and say, well, you guys were supposed to hire a web infrastructure manager in April. This part may change, right? The important stuff is, what did we say we were going to do this year? Are we getting that done? Um, give us the flexibility to build the team uh, the way we think we need to, to to meet those goals. So this was, you know, mine and the board and the um, the tech staff that we do have, our best take on how to get there right now, um, but we think that'll shift, you know, when we have a CTO in place uh, pretty significantly. So, so that's the hiring part. So any questions about those program plans or the hiring? You're looking at um, community internal people. I mean, of course, you know, there's a bunch of CTOs out there who are very, very familiar with Drupal, the yep. um, whole environment and everything. But then again, you might also have an advantage if you take someone who is not so much Drupal. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I, where, do you look, where do you go for, for, for the your hires? Yeah, I mean, I think we our, our dream is definitely to have someone from within the community. Uh, for all of these tech roles, you know, folks who are d deeply invested in Drupal and its, and its success. Um, but um, to your point, yes, we also need to hire folks who are open-minded and can look at other communities and other ways of doing That's things so that we're not necessarily stuck to the way that Drupal's always done it, right? Because clearly I it's agree. awesome, but it also has had some shortcomings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree, yeah, especially with regards to marketing and the whole communications and stuff. And Yeah, very good. Yep, yep. Other questions about that? Okay, so that's the leadership plan. Um, and then the other piece to look at here is the budget. Um, and so I wanna talk folks through what's in the budget uh, here. So I will basically, I will tell you the budget narrative. <laughs> but um, the way that we organize the presentation here, um, we've got a few tabs in the budget down across the bottom. A budget by class, uh, 2014 versus 2013, a cash flow projection, and then accrued expenses. I'll explain that in a minute. So 2014 budget by class. So let's just start by telling you that we operate on a uh, accrual basis uh, for our budget. Um, and the way that we are presenting it here is broken down by basically business line. So um, we've got a few lines of business within the organization. The two Drupal cons, uh, which you can see in column C and D, uh, Drupal.org, column F. Uh, this year we're going to have a product marketing uh line and that's for the Drupal 8 uh, release primarily. I don't know that we'll have this one every year, but it definitely is relevant for 2014. Uh, we have an other programs business line. This is for things like global training days and camp support, that sort of thing. Um, and it's just sort of a catch all for other things. Um, and then we have a fundraising product line that is primarily there because we are a 501c3 uh, organization in the U.S. that is a, you know, a tax status. Uh, it means we're, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. And one of the things that we need to report on in audits is how much have we spent on, on fundraising. And so uh, we're going to keep track of that here with the fundraising column. Um, and then general. So this general is like what you might think of as overhead, right? This is the, um, the rent, the internet access, all that kind of stuff. So so we've broken it out by class, um, and I think we're also going to be reporting financials this way for you throughout the year so that you can actually get some insight into um, how the DA money is getting spent specifically. Right now, all you can see is the general, like the total bucket. What did we spend in February on everything? All sum, right? Uh, and this will now sort of give us a sense of how Drupal.org scales compared to other programs, et cetera. So that's why we presented it this way. Um, and we've got income uh, and then expenses. <laughs> and 
the um, the total net revenue down at the bottom, and then the margin, which is helpful for us, particularly looking at revenue programs. Um, you know, at at how much basically how much effort we have to put in for the um, return we get on the money. Um, and of course, um, we're investing a lot in things that don't generate revenue, particularly Drupal.org. So we expect that will always have a negative margin. And that's that's a little bit different than how most businesses might think of uh, think of margin and, and presenting that. But um, the key point for me when I look at this here is that, um, you know, we're really looking at investing at Drupal.org in a significant way in 2014. And so this goes back to those um, imperatives. Uh, you know, we are in in 2013, it'd be kind of tough for me to actually tell you what we spent on Drupal.org because we haven't been classing out um, the income and expenses that way this year. Um, but in 2014, I can guarantee you it's not $1.4 million. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, it's a lot less. So in 2014, we're really bumping that up. Um, and you can see that, you know, our, our spend on Drupal.org matches now the, the cons. Um, and so this to me is a really significant um, shift because when I came on board, you know, basically everything here was really aligned around the cons uh, and making the cons work. Um, and the thing like we heard very clearly was, you know, more of Drupal.org, please. Uh, and so we've been really focused on um, aligning resources that way. Um, and I'm really pleased to be able to do that um, this year. And I think the other big message we've already talked about a little bit is that obviously the bottom right hand number on the budget is a big negative for 2014. So we are asking um, the board to spend uh, $750,000 of reserves, which is a lot of money um, for sure, <laughs> but we do have it in the bank. Um, and where you can track that is on the cash flow projection tab. So to give you a sense right now, we're estimating that we'll start, um, we'll start 2014, and you can see this in cell C1. Uh, we'll start 2014 um, with $1,350,000 roughly in the bank. Could be a little more, could be a little less, um, but that was our estimate in October when we put this together um, for the board um, to approve. So um, that's where we think we're going to start. Um, and then what we did was we took the income and expense for the year um, that is in our budget. Um, and we played it out across all of the months. Um, and if you then scroll over and look down at the bottom, uh, if you look at cell N107, all that expense uh, for the year, uh, we predict will put us at a cash position of six, roughly $600,000 at the end of 2014. So it's not like we're spending down to zero, but we are spending down to, you know, about one month's um, reserves, which is pretty, um, uh, you know, I think the general rule of thumb that gets th thrown around a lot is, you know, to have three months, at least three to six months of, of reserves on hand. So we're spending down our reserves in 2014. Um, but you can see we still have cash in the bank and nobody should worry about the future of the organization at that point. <laughs> but it is, it, is a, it is a situation. And so by the end of 2014, we need to see that we are hitting revenue in a way that um, you know, we think we can meet our 2015 and 16 projections, which allow us to continue to build staff, but much more slowly, right? Not as aggressively as, as this year. So adding a few positions uh, a year over the next couple of years in 15 and 16, uh, if we can do that and the revenue is looking good, we, we expect that in 2015 we'll be basically revenue neutral. So we won't be building this reserve in 15, but we also won't be running a deficit. And that by 2016, we'd be able to start contributing back to our reserve. But those numbers are super preliminary. And so we don't feel comfortable sharing them with the community yet because I don't want to put something out that you guys hang on to and say, you said it was going to go like that. Uh, and we're still working on all our financial modeling because we don't have a, we haven't had a ton of great data for a number of reasons to, to, to model this sort of thing out. So that was a lot of words. <laughs> uh, one, other, one other spreadsheet I'll point out and then I'll stop again for questions is just the uh, 2014 budget versus the 2013 projections. Um, this, um, this doc is basically just meant to show you where are we growing or contracting across our various accounts for um, between um, what we're budgeting and what we're likely to spend in 2013. Uh, it just gives us a sense of sort of year over year what are things looking like. Um, and so, uh, 
when you look at this, where there are big numbers like, um, you know, utilities is going to go up 2,043%. Um, you can see it's actually not a ton of, that's actually not a ton of dollars difference, but let me find, let me find a good, better example then. Um, I need a bigger one. Give me a second. Um, okay. So here's a good one. So, uh, account 6,400 legal and professional fees, uh, it's going to go down 89% from like 40,000 to roughly 4,000 in the budget. Um, what you'll find in the budget narrative is an explanation of that difference. Why is it going to drop 90%? The answer is because we're recategorizing some expenses. We didn't have the right accounts last year for all the stuff that we do, but at any, at any rate, when you look at those differences, um, the explanation, you can find those in the budget narrative for those big, big differences. So that's how the budget looks and how to take a look at sort of what we're expecting there. Any questions about the numbers there or the presentation or how to read it? I like the clarity and the way that, that it can be read. Um, questions about the, so the, there are no rules or so that would prevent you from basically, you know, running a fairly exciting show in, in, in 2014, um, going down to about one month of a reserve. Is that okay for the type of organization you are or the, the DA, the board says, okay, we'll, we'll go for that, or is that just planned? So, so there aren't any rules governing that, right? I mean, we could spend down to our very last penny if we wanted to. Uh, we could even go into debt if we wanted to. There are no rules from a like a legal perspective, from like the, the Internal Revenue Service or whatever, in, in terms of how we manage our finances. So, um, so we're not. So, so there are no rules around that. Um, but um, and there are also no rules around how much you know how much reserves you need to carry in the bank. You can carry two years of reserves if you want, but you you know you can carry one weeks of reserves if you want. Um, mm -hmm. That's you know, that's entirely up to you and how you want to, how the board wants to manage the organization. So, um, so we don't have to worry anything. There's nothing legal preventing us from running the budget this way. Um, that said, you know, if it, it, it is definitely a risk. It is just one that the board feels like we need to take right now um, because the community concern over Drupal.org is so high, uh, and we just went through a period of, you know, almost two full years uh, getting that Drupal 7 upgrade done, um, that we really need to figure out how to increase the velocity of change that we're able to make on that site, um, and, and to do it in a positive way, um, and we're not going to be able to do that without um, investing significant resources in it, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. so... So it's a risk, but it's a calculated risk. Um, and I, like I tried to emphasize in the staffing portion of it, like we, we know where we need to be uh, at any given point in time. And so if we're not hitting those numbers, you know, we won't then also add the additional expense. What, what are those thresholds and how, how are you going to communicate to the community that you're staying within them as this progresses? Yeah. So um, what we do right now in terms of financials in the board. So um, we have a finance committee that reviews the financial financials on a monthly basis. Uh, and then once a quarter, the finance committee presents those to the board, the board approves them, and then I'm able to publish them out to the community. So um, I do that on the DA blog, uh, the association blog. And uh, I just got, um, we had been doing it monthly for a bit, but we got our process settled within the board. So just, I think last month um, I posted, a, a, uh, I got a post up with uh, a full quarter's worth of financials there. So we'll continue that, um, we'll continue to publish those quarterly. Um, and what we're gonna give you is some variation on this. So you can see uh, actuals versus um, uh, what the budget was supposed to say. So that is, um, so that's, we're going to, uh, essentially going to have to design a new report that shows you basically exposes what we said we were going to do and where we're actually at. So it'll be some variation of this. Um, one thing I want to point out in particular though, if you look at the, um, so this view of the budget here shows it by class. Um, if you look at the cash flow projection, you can basically see what does the budget look like on a monthly basis. And so sometimes when you look at budget, um, items, um, they are, like all over the map, like in particular the con expenses, like we know sort of what the 
ebb and flow of con expenses looks like. So you can see that we basically we know in April we're going to have to pay this expense for for the Austin con, you know, et cetera, right? Um, a lot of numbers, though, you can see they're just spread out evenly across the year. So legal and professional fees, IT, we just have thirty nine fifty in the budget every month for a year. And, and we might not spend that money at all in January, February or March and then hit a situation, not hit a situation, but um, the projects that we have scoped out right now, they may all hit in May and we spend a bunch of that money in May. So one thing. So. The reason that they're spread evenly out in a lot of circumstances right now is because we're not sure when those things are going to hit. Uh, and so we're trying to take a conservative approach, which in budgeting, you just spread it out evenly. Um, so one thing I just want to communicate to folks is that um, I don't think it'll look exactly like this. Uh, and in fact, I don't think that, you know, I can't tell you that I am 100 percent. I feel 100 percent positive that we're going to hit, you know, negative $750,000 on the dot, right? <laughs> um, I think that there will be some degree of variance. Um, I am going to do my best to manage this budget so the variance only happens in a positive direction. Um, but, but like I said, we haven't had a ton of history with a lot of these expenses. And a lot of our financial data isn't structured in a way that can give us the insight at this point to feel with a high degree of confidence that we could manage the budget to plus or minus 3%, for example, um, which is, you know, a standard I'd like to be held to at some point, but I, like there's, I can't, I would not feel comfortable saying that this year. I said a lot of words. Did I actually answer your question? Let's see if that's a yes. That is a yes. All um, right, good. <laughs> Excellent. We just came to the top of the hour, um, but I can stay on for a, a bit longer if folks have other questions or things they want to talk about. I think this was well organized. Thank you very much. Happy to do it. I also think this is, um, but I see it the work. It's a very big step, and it's, it's going in the right direction, definitely. I like that. That's good. And I'll, I'll, I'll chat that around to the uh, to the other folks here in Europe, <clears throat> if I may. Thanks. Well, um, of course. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll also try to mediate, as I always do, which is it tends to out to be my middle name, so that's fine, um, and, and, and trying to make, you know, make sure that things don't boil over. Um, but Holly, whenever you have some time, just chat me up and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the psychology, the psychology of, of, of the European situation, sort of. I mean, yeah. If you give me some feedback on that, it'd be very interesting to find your your vision on that. So I would love yeah. to do that. I would definitely love to do that, Yo. So I appreciate that. Yeah, then I'll, I'll, I'll because I'm in touch with most uh, with most of the folks, and it's 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 all informal, of course, and it's um, yeah, just you don't want to get the wrong kind of rumor going around, right? So, so yeah. We'll try to make sure that that doesn't uh, that it goes in the right direction. Yeah, and so I just encourage you know folks who are you know if you hear folks who have other questions or whatever, definitely you know please encourage them to come have the conversation with us either through right. you know comments on the blog post or you know you can find me on on Skype or at IRC and um, you know wherever I'm I am totally happy email I'm totally happy to answer questions and it's been very. The, the reason I appreciate them the most is because um, it's really easy to get myopic when you're building a budget in particular, and there's so many details, and so you end up taking a lot of it for granted, and it's hard to remember what needs to get said out loud, um, you know, or what assumptions you had that maybe not everyone else is on board with. And so, um, you know, it, it's helpful for me to hear the questions so that we can get better at, you know, answering them preemptively, you know. Mm -hmm. Good. And I just want to acknowledge Ruby's comment to, um, yeah, I think, um, so, so Ruby said, I, you know, hopefully the focus on Drupal.org is in service of supporting and engaging a broader and more diverse community of users and builders. And yeah, that's, that's definitely the intent. And I think we'll see, you know, our first focus is definitely going to be on some of the um, developer tools uh, because there's a lot of pain there. And what we don't want to end up happening is, um, 
slowing down the velocity of the Drupal 8 release in particular because you know people are waiting for 47 minutes for a test bot to do its job. Um, so we're gonna have to focus there first, but we are really interested in better understanding the audiences and delivering better content and tools for um, that full range of, of Drupal user, um, not just the developers. Um, but I think that will take a little while to see that manifest itself. Thanks. Yeah. That's interesting. Anything else, you guys? Not for me, not at the moment. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much. It really is pretty amazing that people will show up to talk about your budget with you. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, if you need anything else, let me know. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. But yeah, thanks again. And uh, I'll put the recording up too, so you can share that as well with, with folks. Thanks, great. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye, everybody.